147. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my iniquity. I have trusted also in the Lord before, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes. I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissenters. I have hated the congregation of the evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands of innocence, so will I can pass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved thy habitation of thy house and the place where thy uh, honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, will walk in my integrity, redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregation will I bless the Lord. I read to you Psalms 26 in its entirety. May the Lord have blessed you reading through the hearing of this holy word. see everyone this morning. <clears throat> I had a slight emergency last week, so, but it's good to be here. <laughs> good to be here. How many of you love the Lord? Yeah. Truly love the Lord. Yeah. Truly, don't, don't fool me now. Yeah. Truly love the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord is good all the time. All the time. That's why we're here to praise the Lord. You know, we didn't come for a funeral today. We're here to praise God. 
<laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. He woke us up this morning. Yes. He got us started on our way. New journey today. Yes. We come here to praise his holy name. All right. We're not here for a show. We're not, seeing, see, you know, we're not here to see who's here. You know, we're not seeing to see what Thomas has got on or, or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> or Sean, you know. <laughs> Are they clean, though? <laughs> But we come to praise the, 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 the place, please God, right? Yes. We please Him by study, yes. by praising His name, yes. by prayer, coming together in fellowship. So we're here to, to, to praise His holy name. So I, you know me, I just like to give a prayer of thanksgiving yes. for this morning, thanking Him for for all He's done for us. Yes. You know, yes. When we look around the world, we see storms and we see hurricanes and we see buildings being torn down by, by strong winds and you know and, and, and the things that are going on are this country's not in a big battle. I mean our, our 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 service people are in conflicts. But we've been fortunate that we're not fighting in this in this country. When we could be overseas and and, and houses being burned up and and people just starving. You know, so we're blessed. We are totally blessed to avoid all those things. But you know, those days might come. Those days might come. So if you don't know the Lord, get to know him. Get to know him. Tomorrow's not promised. So this prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving for all God's done. Just look back over your past and see where he's brought you from. Now, I don't know where you come from. Some of you maybe, but only the Lord knows and you know what you're going through. So may we pray, please. Eternal Father, one sits high and looks low, the creator of all things, the sustainer of all things, the one that placed the moon in this place, the one that makes the sun rise every morning, the one that puts a smile on our face when we think of his son Jesus. We think of what Jesus done for us, Lord. Yes, yes. We thank you for his sacrifice thank on Calvary's cross you, for the sins of the world. We know we're not worthy of those things, Father, but you saw fit and you have mercy upon us. Yes, yes. You look past our faults and you supply us with all of our needs. So we thank you this morning, oh Father. We thank you for this early morning rising. We thank you for the feast that was downstairs and we were able to partake in. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come to your house of worship just one more time. Yes, yes. So we thank you for watching over us last night. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you for the choices that you give us. What to wear, what to eat. And some people have a choice of transportation. So we thank you, O oh Father, for all you've done for us. And we don't take it for granted what you've done for us, Lord. That's why we're here to praise your holy name yes. this day. We thank you for our pastor. Amen. We thank you for his family. Amen. We thank you for the direction that our pastor's taking us in, oh Lord. We're still, we're still leaning and depend upon you. But we know through your guidance and through our pastor, everything will be all right. Bless the choir this day as they sing songs of Zion to you, oh Father. Touch each and every person that's here, Lord, in a special way. You know what we stand in need of, Lord. You made each and every one of us. You know each hair on our heads. Yeah. So the way I ask that you fill us with your love, that we might be about your business, oh Lord. Forgive us of our sins this day. Yeah. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And Lord, we'd be mindful to give you all the praise and glory. We thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Lord, yeah, yeah. Lord we just ask the Holy Ghost to be with us. And as we go our separate ways to keep this feeling of love within us so we might share with those that don't know you. In times of trouble, they come and ask us why we have a smile on our face. And we can respond and say, we have Jesus in our heart. God is love. He's all about love. And as we try to emulate our Lord, we ask for your strength to help us because it's, it's, it's rough out there, oh Father. Yes. And then, so we ask that you fill us with the words that we need to know. And that comes through study that when confronted with 
Satan and all his terrible deeds that we know what to say and we know what to do. And we won't be ashamed of the gospel. Yes. So we love you this day, oh Lord. We thank you for all that you've done for us. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise you enough, oh Father. And you've done way more than expected what's, what we even think we should have. And that's nothing. But we thank you for all that you've done. Be with us the rest of the service, Lord. We, think, we pray that something be said that touches someone in a special way. That they might come running asking, what must I do to be saved? Thank you for the remainder of the day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And as we go our separate ways, please be with us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I pray.
Medical Monday. Uh, they will be having two speakers. Uh, Read Community Benefits will be Billy Kosher. She's the Director of Continuance Care at Read Health. And then we have someone from Agent 9, Area 9, Terry Ham. Uh, she's the Community Program Specialist. Medical Monday is March the 14th at 1 o'clock. And it is at Townsend Center. And you know, also you have the RSVP with uh, Jeannie Griggs Davis or Sherry Hartman. <laughs> Dear Medical Money attendees, thank you so much for attending the, red, attending the Wear Red event. It was a great success. This picture was shared, the picture was shared on social media and the Palladium Idol. I wanted to make you aware that we will move Medical Mondays to Central United Methodist Church the months of June, July, and August. We are trying this due to multiple complaints about little or no air, and there's a conflict with summer school programs at the Townsend. The address for Central Methodist is 1425 East Main Street, and that's on the corner of 15th and Main. Uh, she has a lot of great speakers lined up for the rest of the year, 
and she appreciates your continuous support. Blessings, Sherry Harlan. Uh, the sign up for BBS is out. So if you're interested, please sign up. Please think about it if you're not interested. It's fun. It's called Submerge this year. Amen. Um, after the sign up, uh, there will be a meeting on March the 21st at 6 o'clock. Then on Sunday, April the 3rd, we are invited to a fellowship with Second Baptist Church, and we'll be observing their 129th church anniversary. Uh, joining us will be Mount Pistis with the Pastor Lonnie Anderson, and service will begin at 4 o'clock. Sunday, February, uh, Friday, Sunday through Friday, April the 17th through the 22nd, uh, will be the General Baptist Association, uh, the 110th Annual Convention, and that has been changed to Mount New Zion Fellowship BC, and that's in Anderson, and that's the Reverend Victor Richardson. And that is the week of April 17th through the 22nd, and hotel information will be forthcoming. Uh, beginning Sunday, April the 24th, uh, we will start celebrating our pastor's anniversary. And we have speakers, uh, Dr. Bruce Rose for the morning, and uh, Dr. Moorhead from Columbus that afternoon. And it will continue on Sunday, May 1st, with uh, Dr. Don Butler from Reno, and then the afternoon with uh, Dr. O.T. Poole, and also Second Baptist with Reverend Carl Wefford. And with that, we'll begin at 4 o'clock. And after announcement, there will be an announcement from the pastor's committee. And the committee also will meet every Wednesday at 5.30 for the anniversary. So if you're interested in still joining, it's on Wednesday, every Wednesday at 5.30. Um, also, um, some ladies here have started um, a walking fitness program, and they meet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 o'clock in the morning, and everybody is welcome to attend. So don't think you're too old or too stiff, because it's very low impact. <laughs> That's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 o'clock. <laughs> now, so this is not in the bulletin, but I will have it listed in there. Um, Sunday, June the 5th, we will be going to Pastor Moorhead's church at Hosek Street Baptist Church. <coughs> And it'll be his sixth anniversary. Amen. And it'll be at 4.30, and I will have more information about that and about the bus. Do we have any visitors? Thank you, and I'll turn it over to the announcement and the program.
so you know. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. Anyway, uh, so we will be meeting every Wednesday at 5.30, as Sister Vanessa has stated. Uh, anybody that is, anyone's welcome to come and join and, and, and participate with, on the Pastor's Anniversary Committee for this year. Um, we would like to, at this time, recognize some of the people that are on the committee uh, that have uh, designated tasks that are over certain, certain areas. And uh, feel free to reach out to any one of those people and if you want to join in with whatever, whatever part of the, the, the anniversary that they're, they're, they're over, uh, please uh, reach out to them individually and say, hey, I want to help you do this, I want to help you do this. Or you can see myself or Sister Lynn, okay? Um, transportation, and as I call your name, if you don't mind, just standing so that people can see who you are, I'd appreciate it. Uh, for transportation is uh, my better half, Brother Lawrence Mason, he's on the door back there. Um, uh, hospitality itineraries, Coordinator, co-coordinator, <coughs> Sister Lynn and myself. Uh, Sister Rita Taylor, she's gonna handle the monetary donations for anyone that wants to give a monetary donation to pastor. She's gonna handle that. Um, Sister Jeannie Briggs Davis is gonna handle the decorations and the flowers, corsages, that type of thing. Um, Sister Geraldine Felix and Brother Nate Spicer are gonna handle the uh, dinner fellowships that we're gonna have. They're gonna handle those. <laughs> We're here for you, sis. <laughs> uh, sister, she's not here, but Sister Alicia Thompson and Regina Faye Thompson and Sister Caitlin uh, Taymorn, they are youth leaders for that day. They're going to handle the youth, anything to do with the youth. Could you stand, please, sis? They're going to handle anything to do with the youth on that day uh, will be handled by those three women. Um, Minister Johnny Tate, um, he's going to handle, he's going to be our liaison to the ministers on that day. Um, any minister uh, that he will extend that, that hospitality, he will be joined by a co-lead co in uh, Minister Terry Gibson and Minister Mike Potter will also be uh, participating in that as well. Sister Carol Ann Mack, she did such a wonderful job on our Saturday fellowship last time. Y'all, do y'all remember that? Wasn't that wonderful? It was beautiful. She's going to handle that for us again. Um, Sister B. Tate is going to handle the DVDs that we're going to be um, we'll have a donation for those. Uh, Deacon Phil Tevis and Deacon Thomas Hines will handle the church presentations. Uh, they will handle anything to do with that. Um, Brother Reggie Brown will be our audiovisual. He's our audiovisual man, <laughs> and I think I got everybody. There's a few people I just want to mention that have extended their hand to help. Uh, Sister Lisa Stewart, uh, Johnny Mae Hunter. Marilyn Brown and Sister Brenda Gerald are all planning to be a part of this as well. And it's, it's, it's not just, it's all of us. It's not just, right. just us, it's, it's everybody. So uh, we encourage you to please take a part in this. It's, it's wonderful to, to, see, um, to see this type of thing and to always be a part of a pastor's anniversary. That's always something awesome. So if you guys have any questions, any questions right now? Yeah, what's the theme when you say what is scripture? The theme is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 14. Thank you. Okay, and it's the pastor and people thanking God for his faithfulness. Yes. Did you, did you say Marilyn Brown? Marilyn Brown. Robinson. Robinson? Are you, are you talking about my sister? Yeah, I'm talking about her. <laughs> what I told her. <laughs> what I told her. <laughs> what I told her. <laughs>
First of all, good morning. Uh, I want to uh, meet with all the trustees this coming Wednesday, March 9th at 5.30. All trustees this coming Wednesday at uh, 5.30. Uh, and then um, uh, yesterday, the, the Women's Ministry Association of Indiana and not preaching and other women's ministry is yes. women's serving so don't get that don't get that twisted. Uh, uh, had their meeting at, at Muncie yesterday and uh, had uh, a couple of our people that was specifically requested one being the most beautiful woman in the world <laughs> she, she was asked to do a session on uh, he called my husband, not me. That was the name of the title. Amen. Amen. And then uh, uh, Sister B. Tate did one on uh, It's Time to Grow Up, Spiritual Amen. Maturity. Amen. So we want to give them a couple of minutes each if they want to designate somebody or if they want to come themselves to share with us their experience on yesterday. Amen.
That's why I feel so strongly that we need to have mm -hmm. that here. Mm -hmm. uh, she is our pastor's wife. She's Amen. very articulated. Mm -hmm. She doesn't run the church. She does not have words over the men. And what the Bible says was where she clearly kept us straight. Mm -hmm. right. And I applaud her for being able to back it with the scriptures Amen. and everything. So there's a Amen. question. All you have to do is go to the word. Amen. Sister Donna, I'm very proud of you. I'm very Amen. glad I went to your session. Amen. I really regretted not hearing Sister Kate. But everybody kept talking about Rich was in, in the house, and they just kept referencing what they had Amen. had in the session. Right. We have some learning that is needed. We have some real
once again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah, it is. Thank God for traveling grace to Birmingham, Alabama. Amen. On Friday, I got back late last night, and I thank God the word needs to be preached everywhere. Amen. For there are souls that need to be saved, and I thank God mm -hmm. for his traveling grace. It's prayer time. Whatever request that you have, let it be known to God. I want you to understand that God answers all prayers. Yes, 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 yes. Hmm. May not be when you want it. Well. May not be when you need it. But always remember that he is a God that's always on time. I always use the same better late than never. But God is never late. He's always on time. Whatever problem that you may have, bring it to the altar. Somebody may not have a problem this morning. But they just want to say thank you for being so good to me. We're going to ask Reverend Smith if he will lead us <coughs> to the throne of grace. Won't you come to the altar this morning? James Cleveland said there is a room at the cross. And you got to remember that God is omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere. You ain't got to tell him to go there. He's already there. Bye. 
eyes for the lifting. Amen. Come upon his first anniversary, Satan gets busy. Keep his wife in your prayer, his kids in your prayer. Satan gets busy. And you don't want to see the kingdom move forward. We'll slip. God's able to tell your prayer, peace, be still. I'm able to tell your storm, peace, be still. God is even behind prison bars. Claim it. His mother. God's able. God is able. Without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. 
gonna be buried in it.
keep working in here. We'll see. <laughs> Some things are improving. Amen. And that's all we I'm going to take that for granted. They could have gave me at that song, uh, I Still Have a Praise. Yeah. And when he says, you got the doctor to give you a bad report. Yeah. And even if he gave me a bad report, I still have a praise. Yeah. I, just, I, I kind of wonder if they're just trying to delve into that insurance and drag it out. I don't know. I want to thank my wife also for being with me at those appointments and inquiring and asking questions I wouldn't know to ask. What can this happen here? What can we eat? And so forth and so on. She's helping to starve her pastor too. Amen. <laughs> I lost three more pounds. I lost 16 pounds. I ain't trying to lose no weight when I go to Longhorn. <laughs> I want to start talking about the potato chips naturally. I don't want to say nothing about that. That's over on my left hand side. I won't say nothing. <laughs> but I want to thank everybody for being kind. This Marlene last week for the turkey bacon. Amen. <laughs> she said, It's for you, Pastor. How about that turkey bacon? I'm so hurt. Okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> no one before you long have one, one uh, passage of scripture and several we're referring to Isaiah 64 and 8. And acknowledge the presence of the preachers, Reverend Smith, Reverend Gibson, Reverend Potter, and Reverend Tate. And again, thank them for their. Unending uh, support. Isaiah 64 and 8. Just one verse. Isaiah, Isaiah is in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right before Ezekiel. Right before Jeremiah, I'm sorry. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, yeah, that's right. I'm Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Isaiah 64 and 8 <clears throat> reads as follows. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay. And thou art our potter. And we are all like the work of thy hand. I'm going to talk about for a few moments the mystery of the relationship between dirt and divinity. Wow. The mystery of the relationship between dirt and divinity. As they answer that question, he says, Lord, thou art pot. That's up to chew on, I'll shoot on it too. Uh, I'm here most nights of the week. On Sunday morning, my wife says to me, bring it. And through the week, she calls the church to say, bring it. <laughs> In other words, come on. <laughs> so it depends on the day of the week. <laughs> but the mystery of the relationship between dirt and the dirt. The prophecy of Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel are major prophecies. Not because of what other prophets had to say were minor or unimportant, mm -hmm. but because their prophecies were longer in length as God is speaking uh, both pre and post exile. Right. He is saying to his stubborn, stiff-necked, mm -hmm. hard-headed, and hard-hearted people, yeah. I'm going to give you time to turn it around. Mercy. Uh, yes, but if you don't change, if you don't turn from your way, just like the clay in the hand of the pot, when the vessel is not shaped and fashioned according to the will of the pot, then he breaks the clay. He crushes the clay. He strikes the clay against the wheel and starts the process all over. And he's not necessarily concerned about pain that might come as a result of this process to us. He's more interested in his purpose in our lives. Because sometimes it's necessary for him to have to start over with some of us. 
So, so he turns us. He twists us. He shapes us through the different seasons in our lives. God had one plan for you in your thirties. But now he's shaping you to be something else in your fifties. And if you live long enough, he'll turn you into something by the time you reach your seventies. Just like clay in the hands of the pot, so is your life in God's hands. It's his will. It's his purpose. It's his determination. He decides when and how he wants to use us. So it makes no sense to be envious of what he's doing in someone else's life. He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for me. And, and his plans for me won't work for you. And his plans for you, Perry, won't work for me. He's given us different gifts. So it's foolishness to be mad with someone else because of what God has given him. No matter how angry you get about it, it's not going to stop God from blessing me with what he has for me. Uh, that song, I think Pastor Ronald used to quote, said, what God has for me is for me. Well, God gives gifts according to ability, according to availability. There's a whole lot of folk who don't have much ability, but yet they're with it. They're available. If you stay around the Lord long enough, he will turn you and twist you and shape you into what he wants you to do. Isaiah says here earlier in chapter 64, if you look just a couple verses up, that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Now these rags aren't filthy because they've been drugged through the streets of Richmond. The soil and the dirt and the mud have, have brought about their dirtiness. Uh, no, no, these, these are, they're filthy because the substance on the inside has seeped and soaked through and is now manifested on the outside. All right. It has worked its way through and now the evidence is undeniable. The evidence is so unsightly that nobody even bothers to clean it up. And if you ask me at the church, what are these filthy rags? I'll tell you, for those that don't know what it actually symbolizes. And, and, and so God does not use us because we have anything to bring. All we bring to the table is the residual evidence and the stench and stink of filthy rags that are filthy from the inside out was seen. Wow, wow, wow. Rag that had been left in the pathways of life, exposed and avoided by all who passed by. Wow. Mm. We need to understand that we're in the Lord's presence today. Not because we have anything to offer at the Lord's yeah, table. Yeah. It's simply because of the Lord's grace and mercy yeah, yeah, yeah. that we have not been uh, consumed. Mm -hmm. So we're here today, not because we're worthy, but because He is worthy. Yeah. All right. That's why every once in a while, those with blank stares on their faces trouble me. And it troubles me because I don't know what's on their mind. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that so many are not even thinking about the Lord. Wow. I, I don't see how you can sit in the Lord's presence yes. and not acknowledge where he brought you from. Yeah. 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 his air. Uh, he, he woke you up this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Gave you your health and strength. Yeah. All right. Gave you the mobility of your limbs. Yeah. Put food on your table. Yeah. Yes. Clothes on your back. Yes. Shoes on your feet. Yeah. Shelter over your head. Yeah. All right. All right. And then some come here as if God has to impress you. Yeah. Come on with that reality. Yeah. Says, forget about yourself yeah. and concentrate on him yeah. and worship him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The psalmist says, if it had not been for the Lord, yeah. Our yeah. where would I be? God kept me. Uh, God made my enemies leave me alone. Uh, he wrapped me in the cradle of his arm uh -huh. when he knew I'd be battered and torn. Yeah. And when you think about it, uh, where you were a few years ago and where you are now, it was the Lord who 
brought you through it. It's his purpose. It's his determination to make us what he wants us to be. Yeah. Uh -huh. Think about it years ago, and some of y'all don't remember, I might be dating myself. Uh, I used to play, y'all remember Play-Doh? <laughs> some of you some of you. Yeah. Who played with Play-Doh? Yeah. Uh, and and Play-Doh was soft yeah. and moist yeah. and fine yeah. as long as it was in the can. Yeah. Yeah. But every once in a while, people would leave the Play-Doh out. Yeah. Yeah. And it would harden and become inflexible yeah. because of exposure. Yeah. Uh, now God wants to get some use out of our lives, yeah. but our hearts are too hard, yeah. and our minds are too inflexible yeah. because of prolonged yeah. exposure to some sin yeah. in our lives. Yeah. I hear people talking about the Lord ain't using me. Uh -huh. I, I'm frustrated. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. But now, if you want God to use you, yeah. then you got to expose yourself to His Word. Yes, expose yourself to Him in prayer. Yeah. and obedience to his will. Yeah. He can't get much use out of you apart from prayer and his word. you got to talk to him Amen. and let him talk to you. Yes. Because the world is trying to squeeze us and shape us into his mold. Yeah. But Paul reminds us in Romans 12 to not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In Jeremiah 18, the Lord has an action sermon. He cannot get over to the people unless they see it and understand through Jeremiah's word. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me and told me to go down to the potter's house. Mm -hmm. And he watched that potter fasten a vessel on the wheel. And the wheel was not turning out. Rather, the vessel was not turning out the way the potter planned. Mm -hmm. Because it had hardened and because it was not yet desirable, so he broke it. The vessel was a marvelous vessel. So in order for the potter to keep that clay moldable and pliable, uh, he has to keep it wet. Yeah. He's got to keep it moist and soft so he can shape it the way he wants it. And the way God keeps us soft, the way God keeps us pliable and flexible, is not with water, but with tears. Tears of pain. Tears of suffering. Well, tears of trials and tribulation uh, can help shape you into what the Lord wants you to be. C.S. Lewis says that God whispered to us in our pleasure. He speaks to us in our conscience, but shouts to us through our pain. Because pain, he says, is the megaphone that God uses to shout to a deaf generation. Now, E.B. Hill was here, and he was at a predominantly uh, different culture convention. He said, you all don't know where to say amen. Yeah. You all say amen right there. Amen. Y'all don't know where to say amen. So, so God desired to shape us according to his will. And sometimes his will with our lives conflicts with what we want to do. Yeah. We're so busy trying to be like Mike. Yes, sir. Trying to be like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to have what everybody else has. Yes, sir. Trying to do what every, everybody else is doing. Yeah. But once you name the name Jesus, yes, your life comes under new management. Well, yeah. Yeah. When Christ is in control of your life, you can't do what you want to do. You can't go where you want to go. Uh, you can't say what you want to say because you're under new management. Someone else is in charge. Fortunately for us, the Spirit of God does not let us go all the way to destruction. There's a point where God will not let you go any further, much like a chain on the dog. Uh, because he's determined to make you into the image of his son. Well, Jeremiah says he knows the plan they have for us. Yeah. Plans to prosper us, yeah. to give us a future and a hope. And God has determined that he will make us like Jesus, even in our sinful condition. All right. It's called imputed righteousness. Yeah. He puts righteousness on our account for the sake of his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. When we don't move in our own righteousness, because he's already told us that all of our righteousness is filthy right. Yeah. Uh, you are totally depraved. 
unworthy, unusable, mm -hmm. unless the potter waters you and softens you up. Then when you come to Jesus, yeah. there are a few things that happen to let us know that he is the potter and we are the potter. Yes, sir. First of all, coming to Jesus is safe. Mm -hmm. He is a safe place to hide. Yeah. Yeah. And in the world that's so messed up with war, rumors of war, mm -hmm. earthquakes in various places, mm -hmm. tornadoes and hurricanes tearing everything up. Yeah. And then we look at some of these presidential debates. Yeah. Some of these people who are in line to want to be president. Yeah. Well, our confidence is shaken. Yes, sir. Uh, we need a safe place to hide. Yeah. Who wants Donald Trump as president? Yeah. Who wants Ted Cruz as president? Uh, but Jesus Christ is a strong top. Yeah. The righteous can run in, the Bible says, and find safety. Yeah. I need someone or somewhere to go when there's an emergency in my life. Yeah. And some emergencies, 911 just won't do. Yeah. But when my spirit is troubled yeah. and my soul is weary yeah. and I'm surrounded by material goods yeah. and can't find any peace I need somewhere to hide. Yeah. Yeah. And all over the world who put their confidence in their stuff. Yeah. And when their stuff is gone, they lose their mind. Yeah. Because they don't know where to go when the emergency comes up. Yeah. I know Mary J. Bly says, someone please call 911. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know Mary J. She's a RBRP. -E -R -E. <laughs> That's an old song, too, man. <laughs> All the songs I know in the It's okay because he is the one that's a part of the people. He's the one doing the fashioning and shaping. And he knows what he wants to turn you into. God wants us to be made in his image. Regardless of what the world is doing. Regardless of what your family and friends think uh, ought to happen in your life. God is in control. It's a safe place to hide. Not only is it a safe place to hide, but he's tender enough to trust him. Yes. He's at the wheel. And when the clay is acting funny, there's nothing wrong with the pot. The problem is the clay. You see, some, you see, some clay come from some strange soil. And when you come to the Lord, God got all, got all that stuff that you have and he's got to get out of you that you came here with. There are those of us who grew up in some strange background, yeah. under some strange doctrine, right. some bad teaching. Yeah. And now that God has his hands on us, he's got to get those impurities out of your system. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes that takes years. Yeah. Many of us who are saved have been in church a long time yeah. and are just now becoming what God Bye. wants us to be. Yeah. Been saved 40 years. But we messed up 35 of those 40 years. <laughs> Under some bad teaching. Yeah. Uh -huh. People told you you had to do this and you had to do that. Uh, other things we did just on our own because we could. Yeah. We were accountable to no one. We dared anybody to tell us what to do. Yeah. We were the bully. Uh -huh. We were the intimidators. Yeah. And we brought all of that mess to church yeah. and got on committee. We started working with yeah. ministry yeah. and dictating to them what we expected yeah. without visiting the Word of God. Yeah. And when you try to operate without and exist without the Word of God, your life becomes full of and infested with impurity. Yeah. Impure thoughts. Yeah. Impure motives. Yeah. Impure attitudes and actions. But, but God's got to get all those impurities out of the clay well, so he can fashion you into a usable vessel. Yeah. And one of the things I like about God, in spite of the impurities, he doesn't discard the clay. He don't, he don't find the nearest trash can and just drop you off okay? because you refuse to be walking. No, he'll, he'll put you on 
on the wheel and you clear off those impurities with the tears of suffering. And because it's your tears that allows him to shape you and mold you while at the same time dissolve your impurity. And what keeps my spirit calm and what helps me to keep a good balance is the fact that God is the one working on me. Well, well, He's not going to turn that job over to anyone else. That's right. Because if you let somebody else work on me, they will shape me the way they want me to be. And I'm not interested in being a carbon copy of anybody else. God has given us all gifts according to individual, individual ability. I don't want to be like you, and I don't want you to be like me. Let's together be like Christ. I'm pleased to let God have control. Because he's safe enough to hide in. He's tender enough to trust in. But finally, he's far-reaching enough to take me to a life beyond myself. Here I am, perceived now, to be born on the wrong side of the tracks. My parents were not considered upper class. None of my siblings and I came from old money. But we didn't have any money. I remember going to a store on 6th and Main called Left and New yeah. And we just was looking. Mom and I looked, I'm 10 years old, just looking. 1967, just looking, but didn't have no money. And, and I'm walking on the ground because I have holes in my shoes. Well, well, I told Mom, oh, look, she said, oh, I'm sorry, put those back in half of it. And the man came over and said, can I help you? He said, no, no, that's okay. And uh, uh, he said, she said, well, how much were they? Well, like $6.99, didn't have it. Mm -hmm. He said, well, how much do you have? She had a dime. She gave that man her last dime, and he gave me those shoes. He was poor. Her last dime. So when I hear people in the hymn talking about when I was down to my last dime, that means something to me. I watched it happen. I watched her fingers reach in and purse get that last dime for some shoes from never knew. We social standing. Yeah. Our house on North 8th Street had a cold stove for many years yeah. that only heated the living room in the wintertime. Yeah. They just tore it down the other day. The windows upstairs had frost on them. Snow and rain from time to time would make its way to the blankets on my bed. Yeah. And it was so cold upstairs sometimes. Yeah. Mom and I would talk to each other and you could see our breath yeah. in the air. Yeah. We had no bathtub. Uh, we had to bathe in a galvanized number two yeah. yeah. in the kitchen yeah. in the oven door no. in order to try to stay warm. Yeah. We had a television yeah. with a plastic fake color screen.
right here. There's some folks here. Sister Cook is one. Yeah. Brother Mary yeah. Williams is one. Yeah. Brother and Sister Potter. Yeah. And then my late uncle, Reverend George White, kept yeah. a watchful eye on me. They yeah. helped shape my life. Yeah. I'm glad I had it the way I did. Yeah. I'm glad my mother and father made me get up every Sunday morning. Put on the little handy down from the yeah. halls and relics. And took me to church. Not only to be with the folk, but to be part of the fellowship. Yeah. Then after Sunday school, we'd get we get to Sunday school and after Sunday school. Uh, if you had any doubts about the realness of God, I remember the choir used to sing, there are some things yeah. I may not know. Yeah. There are some places I can't go. But I'm sure of this yeah. one thing.
The gospel has been preached this morning. Maybe somebody heard this morning is a piece of clay. And they want the Lord to mold them to what he would have them to be. But maybe there's somebody here this morning that have not accepted Christ as your personal Savior. Romans 10 and 9 said, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth. Believe in thy heart that the Lord Jesus died, buried, and resurrected, thou shalt be saved. All right. Amen. Amen. church home. You should always have a home to go to. The Lord said, come on back home.
excelentes cumpleaños. Thank you again. We thank you that you are the part of the play. Yes. Pray that you help us to uh, commit to allowing you to mold us and do what you want us to be. Yes. And we just thank you uh, that you have that illustration. And oftentimes, through tears, is what makes us more powerful. Yes. So we just help. Pray that you help us uh, to again glorify you in all that we do and say. We we'll prepare to give you the praise. I'm in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rest rule in the Bible with us now and forth and forever. Amen. Shall we all say it together? Amen. 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 